Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Tekla Rutin about Marionette, which is going to be available November 3rd. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. It's a really amazing film. The thing that kind of stands out to me when I'm watching this film is, you know, it's being labeled as a supernatural thriller. And in a lot of ways, that's what it is. But in a lot of ways, there's a lot of genre bending happening on Marionette. There's the horror aspect of it. There's a lot of the drama. Your character is going through a lot. What do you think about this new way, this new age of like genre bending movies and TV shows like Marionette, Tecla? Well, I think it's I think it's great that um, filmmakers like Albert and there's definitely more examples of it yep. feel the freedom to to let to bend them all in and, and to use everything that inspires them and to put it all into one film. And I think also audiences really love it. Sometimes it may happen that you're confused, like you're expecting something and you get something that has other tastes as well. But I think um, it's the same with Warrior Nun, the series in Netflix that I'm in. It's, there's a lot of genres there. And I think it's really some the freedom that people feel to make it. I think it's good. But I don't feel like you have to limit yourself. I feel like you look at kind of like 10 years ago, there was a lot of it, it's got to be it's a drama. It's a horror. Yes. That's kind yeah. of been thrown out the window completely. Or I it's feel romantic like. comedy. Yeah, exactly. Or, or, yeah. When I think maybe it's because those genres have, have established themselves so well. Yeah. And it's what inspires us and it's what inspires the generation. I think that's why you you, 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 you pick from more genres and, and blend it into something new. Absolutely. Because there's also, of yeah. course, the mystery component of this. There's kind of like what's happening in, with, with, with this kid and what's going on. There's a lot happening in the movie did you notice yeah. that when you're reading the script that it was packed or did yes. you yeah well because i read it i immediately felt i want to do this mm. and also at the last page i thought i want to read this again yeah. because i mean it's not straightforward it's not like you pick everything up in the first reading <laughs> you know i mean looking at looking at the second time you will find out a lot more layers to it it's very funny you said that because that was another talking point of mine i mean you know there's a lot of you know binging and tv and and people are watching like casual viewing they say tecla where they're just kind of watching yes. and you know they can have their phone and everything just marionette is not that movie you got to pay attention no. <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> yeah stay focused yeah absolutely and it's also really a film that's i mean i know a lot of people have really big tvs but it's really a cinematically it's also really satisfying to see it on a big screen oh absolutely no for sure and it's funny because you know they're saying we're in the golden age of content right now and there's a lot of reasons why and i feel like you kind of touched on a lot of them right now you talked about the script it was amazing the the storytelling and the writing is just next level these days it looks good it's got eye candy is it interesting though the global access are you noticing that as well that the more countries have access to content quickly and instantly. Is that something you're noticing as well that's strengthening like how we watch and how we make content these years, Tekla? Gosh, I mean, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I think it's 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 great thing is that it's it's connecting audiences around the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have a friend on another continent and you're watching the same shows or things and being inspired by it. Yep. And I think it also, hopefully, it, it. I mean, there's a lot of cultural um, uh, interaction through makers now. It's much easier to, you know, America wants Europe to be in their show. You know, everyone is is drawing from each other, and I think that's very positive. Absolutely. You look at Marionette. You look at other projects you've worked on in the past. You look at, you know, you mentioned Warrior Nun, um, In Bruges, Red Sparrow, The American. Like, these are all different roles. Like, it's not even, I'm not even talking about, like, the genres of, I'm not talking about the genres of the movies and the TV shows. I'm talking about you specifically as a storyteller and your roles. These are different roles. Do you look yeah. back sometimes and feel like, Obviously, you know, you go where the opportunities are and, and everything, but like, it's pretty cool that you've been able to play a diverse amount of roles in the past as well. You look at Marionette, different kind of roles, different landscapes. Definitely. I mean, it, it's, it's, 
it's a combination of things I try to choose carefully, but definitely it's also, I'm really lucky to have had all these things on my path. It's partly to do with, I speak, a, I, I love languages and yes. I feel very European as an, as an actor because I have an Italian mother, I'm Dutch and I, I love languages in school. So I speak German and English and French and like I've done stuff in London for, for Sky and Netflix. This is coming out on Amazon. It's, it's largely also these platforms that also enable what you're saying. You know, they enable all these different makers to come together and, and make, make things for such a huge audience. And because yeah, of the really yeah, and, and because of these platforms too, I mean, international content has been kind of like right, like the center of attention. I feel like, and it's an amazing. And you look at content from all around the world, and I always I have to tell you, you know, there's always this debate, and I don't, you know, there's the dub. Of, you, you mentioned you speak a lot of different languages. There's obviously the dubbed English versions of a lot of these content, but no. <laughs> subtitles i feel like yeah. Yeah, i feel like you have well, I mean, to we've grown into that i mean it was not not like in the early history of the streamers there were so many danish series that were so good and some dutch as well that have been you know they bought the rights and they made their own version but in the end it didn't really work no because they found out that the culture itself is what makes it interesting and the fact that it roots in denmark and in those systems but the great thing i think as well like it's internet is not such a is still very young yes. in the you know the large historic perspective and i think it's what we realized and, and in both in europe and in america and other continents that the world has become so global so our storytelling needs to become more global and we are being you know inspired or in also uh <laughs> um how do you call that like aggressively bombed with news like from stories from all around the world everything is global so yeah so it has an effect on our storytelling which is great i mean it used to be holland had like three channels and that was dutch you know television that was it and now it's it's a great landscape it's oh absolutely worldwide. i do feel sometimes that there's a lot of pressure because there's just so many shows and so many movies to watch and I don't oh feel God. like I'm. I don't feel like I'm ever gonna be making a dead take. Like, I don't think so. <laughs> I've given that up. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's more about choosing what really interests you. You have to pick and choose, so you have to be selective because yeah. there's so much. But you know what? You know great. what's gonna. But you know what's gonna interest them though. That I have to say, you know what's gonna interest them? The marionette, <laughs> which is available November third. <laughs> Yes. We're going to see that. Getting back to that as well, which yes. I thought is really cool. I love your character in this film. Your character is going through so much. And yes. it's it's a journey just with your character. There's other amazing performances. I want to know, and preparation-wise, like, what was it like kind of diving in the shoes of this character specifically? Well, um, as you know, the script, because you know the film, it's, it's, it's almost a mathematic um construction and i met albert the director and writer and we straightforward spoke for three hours wow. about this and so my my preparation was really with him yep to get i also compare it to an escher uh uh painting almost like a drawing of his but because the worlds are um connected but in in ways that you can't always grasp immediately so it was really with albert we just got our universe together and like on set we only needed one word or two to connect where are we and so it was mostly that what's interesting about the character what i really love about it is that it was originally written for a man yeah oh interesting and uh, yeah actually uh back in the day matt damon was supposed to play it actually he was interested and it was like a long time ago the script had been around for a while wow. And I love that at a certain point, Albert said, I want it to be a woman. And they didn't change a thing. They literally just changed he to she, basically. And, and, and so made nothing, it. In the, nothing, like nothing script wise. And I, think I, felt, I think I felt that when I read it, you know, the way she drinks whiskey or a lot of things that are not always typically written into female characters. Well, they get more and more interesting nowadays. But there was something about it that was so full and so you know, uh, yeah, had such depth that wow. I, I, I really think it's a, it's a nice detail to know this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Two more questions before we wrap up. I mean, you're, uh, 
take that route in as a storyteller. You know, we talk about acting, but that's what this is what you do. You're a storyteller. And it's exciting because you're able to kind of work on a lot of amazing projects that we talked about. What excites you specifically about being a storyteller, though? Well, it's you're so right. That's why I set out on this journey in the first place when I was 17 and going to theater school. I believe storytelling is really essential in the world. I think also after, you know, the, the lockdowns and everything, it's proved, again, the value of storytelling. And I, um, I worked with Joe Edgerton on Red Sparrow, and I asked him politely if I could borrow something that I heard him say in an interview that he is really uh, um, pursuing nutritional storytelling. And I said, that's exactly what my heart sings for. Yep. I want to be part of things that, you know, don't feel like you've had a uh, fries and hamburger and feel a bit sad afterwards, although it tasted really good. <laughs> I would really like to yeah, be part of, and it can be very diverse, but stories that, that leave people with something that they feel uh, fed by in a good way and that, you know, that bring out something, something good along the way, whether it's humor and comedy or drama, it doesn't matter. 100%. And so that's, yeah, the, I thank you, Joel. N <laughs> nutritional storytelling. I Shout think it really sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, um, very quickly, when they get to watch the marionette November 3rd, um, what are you hoping they get out of it, takeaway wise? What, what are you saying? Sorry. Sorry. When they get to watch the film on November 3rd, yeah. what are you hoping they get out of it takeaway wise? Well, I'm happy on a few levels. I'm really happy if they've seen a thriller that they were like on the on the front of their seat and like until the end be uh, uh, hunting for what's going on. I'm really happy if they uh, if the audience gets it on a deeper uh, philosophical level. That's definitely in there. Like who is in charge of our lives? what do we let others be in charge of yep. uh, and what do we believe there so I, I i'm excited on those two levels oh absolutely take well, thank you so yep. much for coming on pop turn and chatting about the marionette i really appreciate it thank you so much so november Lovely. november 3rd they're gonna be able to catch it amazon Vimeo, tomorrow. and on demand which is amazing it's pretty soon and um is it's there any tomorrow. social yeah tomorrow <laughs> exactly <laughs> where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything is it like an instagram I'm on instagram okay I'm on Instagram, and there is Marionette the movie on Instagram. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm on Instagram. Amazing. Well, welcome. Is, Very welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been Pop Turn of youtubecom slash Turn for previous episodes. You're going to be able to catch Tekla Rutin in the Marionette, available November 3rd. Until next time, this is Tekla and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.